gotta be kidding me. You're gonna risk the entire mission for a mental defective dress as a court jester. It's coming from a guy that wears a toilet seat on his head. We don't leave one of our own behind. Hopefully Harley's still alive. No funny business, Arnold. These are dangerous people. Team two is clear to go. Fire up. Three, two. What are you guys doing? You, we're, we're here to save you. You were gonna save me? It was a really good plan, too. Well, I can go back inside and you can still do it. That's patronizing. I'm so sorry. Harley Quinn. Blood sport. You know the deal. Successfully complete the mission, you get 10 years off your sentence. Times are hard. You fail to follow my orders in any way. And I detonate the explosive device in the base of your skull. Can do the job so this is the famous Suicide Squad. Nom nom. Any questions? And? Yes, that is your hand. Very good. We're all gonna die. I hope so. Oh, for fuck's sake. Here's the deal. We fail the mission, you die. If we find out any information you give us is false, you die. If we find out you have personalized license plates, you die. What? No. If you cough without covering your mouth... Harley, although that isn't an open invitation for you to cough without covering your mouth. What's the plan? How the hell am I supposed to know? You're the leader. You're supposed to be decisive. And I've decided that you should eat a big bag of dicks. If this whole beach was completely covered in dicks, and somebody said I'd eat every dick until the beach was clean for liberty, I would say no problem. Why would someone put penises all over the beach? Who knows why madmen do what they do? This is suicide. Well, that's kind of our thing. I'm gonna get you out of here alive. I'm going to get you out of here alive. Oh my god, we've got a freaking kaiju up in this shit! Uh huh. I don't wanna do your I love the rain. It's like angels are smooching all over us. Welcome everybody to Pop Culture. I'm Scott. I'm Jason. And I'm Monica. And welcome back to another week in lockdown here in Sydney, where we record our beautiful show from our separate venues. Thought we'd take a moment to address the fact that yes, we are doing three shows a week at the moment, which a couple of people have uh, have been like, oh, you seem to be putting out a lot of shows lately. <laughs> and it's sort of like, well, we haven't got much else to do. <laughs> yes, it's a bit of an escape from the... Uh four walls in some weird way isn't it and and judging by the numbers you guys are appreciating the escape as well so firstly i just want to say (laughs) thank you guys so much for listening to all of the crazy shit we've been putting out lately so um and i thought like maybe we just acknowledge the fact that yeah we're doing three a week we record them in one go and like you know give people a little bit of hey you're getting two more episodes this week we're getting the suicide squad today we're going to have uh, a cult classic, which we're now doing sort of weekly as each of us picking a cult classic. And this week's my turn. Um, sorry. And then next week, we'll probably go back to Jason and Monica. And whoever. But if you guys are listening and you're really enjoying it, and obviously a lot of you are because the numbers this week went pretty crazy. What do you want us to talk about? Jump onto Facebook, facebook.com forward slash pop culture pod, and send us in a cult classic that you'd like to hear us talk about or a topic. We've done remakes. We've done action movies. We've done comedy let us know. Yeah, sound off. Please share. <laughs> We're sort of moving away from the like bad movies. So if you send in something really heinous, we'll probably just ignore you. Yeah, well, Scott says that now, but well, so... I, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Scott will be like, oh, but I like that movie. Let's oh, that one's fun. <laughs> Jurassic Park 3 coming right up. <laughs> oh, Alan. <laughs> Alan. All right. Firstly, the Suicide Squad. So this is James Gunn's entry into the DC Extended Universe with a soft reboot of the uh, Suicide Squad, I guess, as a franchise at this point. We've already had a first film. Sort of. 
Yep, and we had a solo Harley Quinn movie as well, so it's gaining some steam and some momentum. Sort of, again. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> kind of. And why do you keep saying even. sort of? I well, because it was the Birds of Prey movie, but really it was a Harley Quinn movie. Yeah, okay. It and was, the other they, one... literally, they literally changed the name of it after it had been released to Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey, as opposed to Birds of Prey and the fantastic emancipation of one miss harley quinn which was its original title which is a mouthful (laughs) (laughs) i'm not naming a podcast that (laughs) (laughs) uh so dc i think it's pretty obvious that they keep having cold feet when it comes to their properties and they keep sort of starting and restarting and and but keeping a continuity which is really strange it's almost like a change of flavor rather than (laughs) Yeah, uh, this this definitely stands out from those other two films, partly because of James Gunn's style, which comes through in it. Like, just say, doesn't yeah, adjust. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, um, I felt like I was just watching a parallel universe of Guardians of the Galaxy. Not quite as good, version. but yeah, yeah. It was sort of like, let's go harder on the Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, but yeah, you can definitely see his style in there. And I... I preferred this one to uh, the other Suicide Squad film I saw. So I, I preferred this one to every other DC movie that's made, yeah. I think. <laughs> yeah, same here. I thought it was 55% great, 45% what the hell is going on, but I'm on board. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've already bought a ticket. <laughs> I bought a ticket. I'm, I'm renting to own, so we're good. And, um, yeah, for this film, especially bringing James gun into the mix as well it's i found this film was a lot like deadpool in that it showcases what can happen when a superhero movie is allowed to go full tilt full gore full r rating and have that self-awareness about itself and it makes it so much more fun and so much more watchable i think i think i think that part of that is like the the oversaturation of superhero movies and it's sort of like a yeah. when one of these a deadpool comes along it's, it's like a breath of fresh air yeah it is it's sort of treated with this irreverent um, humor cut with this really dark, violent streak with it, almost Tarantino-like. So, yeah, it's, oh, it's so it's, refreshing. This movie is gruesome. <laughs> yeah, it's it's yeah, very gory. Yeah, actually, it's probably more than Mortal Kombat in some ways. So, just so yeah, it, like yeah. the detail at which it goes to show its gore. I think it's sort of done in a different way. If um, to Mortal Kombat, um, Mortal Kombat because it's got um, that grounding in the video game and it's sort of meant to be gory for gore's sake. But this one, it's just like, no, we're going to throw that all away and we're going to show you violence. Mm. <laughs> this is like, uh, I think it was Peter Jackson called a splat stick. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good descriptor. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is like, I was in hysterics and it was, I mean, it's pretty gruesome and I was laughing and my, my wife was utterly disgusted with me and the movie <laughs> so it's i don't think it's everyone's cup of tea it's certainly not the usual superhero fair no certainly not especially considering that you know our heroes are you know a ragtag group of um d-bags really um <laughs> they're all villains you know and even viola davis who is such a wonderful amanda waller like, can we just talk about how much of an asshole she is? But she plays it so she, beautifully. Like, they, I think they tapped into, like, I think James Gunn was like, no, this character's horrible. <laughs> Let's she, show how horrible she is. Oh, and she played it so perfectly. Like, that scene where she's, um, I guess, blackmailing Idris Elba's character into being part of the mission was just so... It was really interesting to watch and quite tense as well because she... Oh, and you, you had everyone else was it. like, we're not really going to do this, are we? And you're just like, no, she's going to do it. You know, she, she, it's her way or the highway. Um, an assortment of characters. Now, if you haven't had the chance to see The Suicide Squad yet and you want to, I'm going to go a little bit spoilery. Mm. Totally up to you. You're welcome to listen. If you want to wait till the, you get a chance to see the movie... By all means, wait. Uh, an ensemble cast that is shredded in the first <laughs> ten minutes. <laughs> yeah, I that was really good. I have to say, I I enjoyed that build up with uh, Michael Rooker. Was it Savant? Is that the name? Savant? Yeah, yeah. Um, it it was all building up like here's your next main uh, character leader, if you want, of the Suicide Squad, and. 
then yeah, that just gets overthrown, <laughs> as you said. <laughs> All of, like, like, oh, and Nathan Fillion is an arm fall off boy or TDK. <laughs> yeah, it was it was such an effective um, bait and switch. <laughs> yeah, and it really? was just like, like what? <laughs> Yeah, uh, I actually enjoyed that. Normally I'd find that a bit annoying if they lead it up that way, but for some reason the way that it was constructed with it as you're just following the um, the, the distracting team, the distraction, and <laughs> yeah. not the real team, uh, it, it works. It, it was really good. I also liked how it really did still reflect comic books in lots of ways throughout the film too. So that was an example of it where it says, oh, the transition, well, well, you know, yeah. 36 hours ago and you go back to something else and it's done really well. But yeah, the cast, amazing cast. Yeah. Yeah. What a cast. <laughs> yeah. A really good cast. I never really rated someone like John Cena. I was just like, Oh, he's just one of those WWE wrestlers who wants to give acting a go. I love the rock, but he really turned it. He's he surprisingly it. good. Yeah. He's good. Very... He, is, he is good in a lot of things. He is, but yeah. he was especially good as like douchebag Captain America. <laughs> I, I, I had extremist Captain America in my notes, being like he's just the really huge dick version of Captain <laughs> Steve Rogers. <laughs> yeah, he's a, but he will he will do anything to achieve the goal of of freedom. <laughs> yeah, and he also had a really good sense of um comic relief without it distracting from the story as well like his dick measuring contest between him and Idris Elba when they <laughs> throughout the film is just fantastic <laughs> that was a uh, the the introduction to his character and Idris Elba's were both really good and yeah. very funny and well played and Idris Elba really um brings it as well. well what a performance by Idris Elba he can do anything well, yeah, he, he actually brought the gravitas to it for some reason. He has managed to give it some sort of, uh, I guess, uh, heavier feel to the character in itself and what was going on. And it, it, it's all testament to his acting, I'd say. It just really worked. Mm, he yeah. was, well, he was, he was meant to uh, replace Will Smith, so that's meant to be Deadshot. Right. Oh, okay. So the character that Will Smith played. So Idris Elba was initially, initially cast as a replacement for Will Smith uh, because Will Smith was busy. And then they sort of decided um, like late in the game, script's already done. Oh, what if Will Smith wants to come back one day? Let's pick a different character. And they tried, and James Gunn was a big fan of Bloodsport in the comics, like the only character to put Superman in the ICU. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> he picked Bloodsport. And, and it was, I mean, you couldn't tell. So, hmm. Yeah. It, you know what? I think it was a good choice to sort of switch the character as well because why not give us something new? It's a different squad anyway so you should have a different leader so it makes sense yeah and i like that it's sort of even though the other suicide squad movie is really bad this at least keeps like an element of continuity i guess if you're a fan of the series at least it feels like oh this is my part two yeah so it certainly does and i also loved the other two um members of the team i loved rat catcher too um she was i think like the emotional core of the movie she's just so sweet her pet rat's named sebastian and she's adorable and um also can we talk about polka dot man, polka dot man. <laughs> <laughs> the character the much maligned character he's up there with calendar man and <laughs> i'm fall off for in a lot of people's books i think but but yeah and how he just his his mummy issue <laughs> yeah, it's that... just amplified <laughs> That was, <laughs> it was a, like a, a character that I like, like really came to like. Yeah, same here. I liked him a lot in the movie. I thought he was really well done. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, you finally go to Harlequin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which Margot Robbie just really owns that. I don't know what they're going to do if they ever had to replace her because um, it's just one of those things where she's managed to pull it out of what was probably going to be just a bit part originally and well she's well i mean the characters the character is an absolute like pop culture icon and has been since her creation in the 90s batman cartoon because they had to give joker a girlfriend because they were worried that the joker was a bit camp mm. for kids <laughs> so <you> better, <laughs> better have a girlfriend to make sure that he's not gay and and she sort of turned into this amazing icon and i think Margot Robbie's nailed the performance it's very like she's made it iconic but also very true to the comics yeah, you sort of get that continuity 
like the voice is like she's she's nailed that sort of strange twangy accent that <laughs> that um I can't remember the name of the actress who did it originally. Tara Strong. Was Tara Strong? Mm. Yes, Tara Strong. Yeah. Uh like so replicating that but has sort of just made it hers. Yeah, and also the sort of the way that she, that she walks, the way that she sort of makes these snap decisions in moments of lucidity, or you know, or you know, quote unquote craziness. <laughs> um, and you know, she's also very cold and calculating, and you know, she's a very um, competent fighter, and you know, a, a threat in her own right. And um, like a, a incredibly powerful woman who at yeah. one point they mount a rescue for her and she's saved herself in the most gruesome fashion possible <laughs> and then it's like so, that's, yeah. so touched by the uh, effort of the guys to come and rescue her. <laughs> and she like, i can get but, uh, back inside <laughs> yeah 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 no, it's um a great character and margot robbie really does bring it justice um it's it's interesting to see how these villains often just become so much more remarkable as characters compared to the heroes if you go back to things like batman or superman or anything like that mm -hmm. and they just they always stand out um, yeah and in saying that as well you also have this ragtag group of villains playing the hero but then you also have you know um this wasted opportunity in um peter capaldi as the villain as yeah, well the thinker the thinker, like I could have thought that would have gone everywhere, but you know they only really let him go sixty percent. Malcolm Tucker, they did, <laughs> and you could see moments where he wanted to unleash. <laughs> yeah, and I was just like, you've got a, a very, very competent actor in Peter Capaldi. I, I just thought he was underutilized as a villain, and therefore it didn't make him very effective. It was, it was just a, a means to get Star Starro into the into the mix. Oh, you mean the Pokemon Starfish Borg character? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I mean. <laughs> James Gunn has found the biggest shovel he could and dug deep into the DC mythology to find some of these characters. <laughs> yeah, but good for him. He sort of went, I guess, um, a bit left field and picking more unorthodox characters rather than, you know, the old faithfuls. Um, yeah. I feel that shows and demonstrates a respect for the DC universe and the legacy of the comic books. Well, and he did. He did a similar thing in Guardians as well. Yeah, characters like Ego and stuff like that. I think a lot of people are just sort of forgotten about. You yeah, know, when you've got Ultron and stuff running around, it's easy to kind of overlook these big bad ones of the sixties. Mm. Um, but I, I mean, and then what? Sylvester Stallone as King Shark. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bonkers. <laughs> yeah, it was a bit rootish, I have to say. It was like a very yeah. yeah. It was like, but he tried to he apparently was deliberately trying to make sure that it didn't look too cute, like by making him like <laughs> overweight and stuff. Well he failed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With those little beady eyes. Yeah. Well, when it when he's jumping around with those little weird squid things in the tank, that pretty much undermines it completely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then they're just like these horrible <laughs> nightmare creatures. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it seems to be that's how the film really works is um, James Gunn's really playing with the expectations that you get in a lot of these scenes. So it leads you one way and he'll instantly subvert it to make it a bit more shocking and surprising, but also really fun because it happens. And um, that squids things is a good example. Yes. of how it keeps doing that throughout the film. Uh, from from the start of the movie to yeah. the end of the movie, it is a, it's an exercise in breaking your expectations, but doing it in a really playful way. Yeah, and it also suits the fast pace of the film as well. There's a lot going on, but I didn't feel there was a, a slow moment in the film. It, that, yeah, and, that rather than, and rather than doing like 500 cuts, he, would, he was using like zooms. <laughs> and stuff like that, which was a really refreshing um, uh, use of camera work for these sort of these sorts of movies. Yeah, the visual style is really lovely and very effective for the whole film. And there's and that some, stand. some action in one shot, and mm, yeah, yeah. Okay. the the comic book mixture of uh, graphics too, I found really well done. That moment where Harley Quinn's escaping and all the bloods turning into petals and flowers yeah. and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really, really was. Uh, I don't know. It, I, I think back to what was the other film we saw. Um, I suddenly forgotten it. The 
killer like John Wick for oh, that like female. Gun, gunpowder milkshake. Yeah, gunpowder milkshake. That scene sort of had a similar look to it, but just that style of adding those petals and things. It was outstanding. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I loved that hallway scene as well. It just gave me um, a look into Harley's own mind. You know, she would yeah. find something like that quite beautiful. And <laughs> yeah. um, it also gave me really big um, Who Framed Roger Rabbit vibes just because there's cartoon flowers and little critters it's everywhere. Like, it's like these coons just magically appearing out of nowhere. <laughs> But I was, yeah, I thought it fit perfectly. It made sense for the character. And it was also really good effects, I have to say, in that scene as well. Like, it looked really lovely. Yeah, it's yeah, it's strange. But, yeah, in a demented way, it did quite pretty. <laughs> well, but it, yeah. su it suited her. It was just uh, like a really good comic representation of what you're seeing as a character on screen. And uh, I just went, it's great to see that in it. Uh, I'd like comic book films probably to grab that more rather than uh, embrace try kind and, of yeah and rather than try and be really serious about themselves and say yes it is a comic book and you can play with all of that uh text media if you want to enhance it and make it playful as you said yeah you could see that scene in a panel in a comic book as well with all those beautiful illustrations you know i can definitely see that if i was flicking through a comic book you know and Seeing it on so it's almost like the, 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 mature, the mature um kind of advancement of like the 60s batman a kind of like boom pow kind of like <laughs> we're not we're not really serious here <laughs> yeah 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 but but too much more effect like not yeah. not such obvious effect as that one uh but it, it's probably more artful i would say mm. yeah i would agree and, yeah and that's what it is this is a this is a superhero superhero loosely <laughs> air quotes asterisk film that um embraces comic books and embraces the love of the medium and like the reason these movies exist is because we have comic books and it was really refreshing and i and i had so much fun with it i was laughing i was in a stereo i was shocked <laughs> from time to time yeah. <laughs> yeah and um also to sort of add to all this visual style as well i thought the music was really good in this film as well like it just sort of suits everything as we go and even in the opening scenes as well whenever you sort of have johnny cash on i'm immediately <laughs> on board like what a good choice <laughs> i think it's very clear that james gunn has excellent uh, taste in music yeah <laughs> <laughs> I would love to um, for him to release his playlist for this movie as well, just like he did with the Guardians, because I would listen to it in a heartbeat. <laughs> cool. So the Suicide Squad. I, I, I think I always knew I was kind of going to enjoy it. I didn't know I was going to enjoy it this much. I, if I'm honest, I was completely prepared to dislike this movie just because I really disliked the first one, but I'm happy to be proven wrong in this instance, and I thought it was really enjoyable. Yeah, I'm... I'm the the worst critic of uh, superhero films, but I don't put this as a superhero film. I put it as a comic book film, and yeah. it it really does enhance it and take it to heart as it's uh, showing its uh, actions. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, James Gunn. Thank you very much. <laughs> cool. So that's this first episode of this week's block of pop culture. You have something to look forward to in a couple of days as we jump into our next cult classic, which is Reanimator. Thank you guys for listening to this episode of Pop Culture. I've been Scott. I'm still Jason. And I'm still Monica.